Section 9.2, Calorimetry. Calorimetry is a way to measure the transfer of heat to or from a substance using a calorimeter. So we're gonna define two terms here. First, system. System refers to the substance or substances that are undergoing the chemical reaction or the physical change, or we could say chemical or physical change. The surroundings are simply the other components of the measurement apparatus that serve to either provide heat to the system in the case of an endothermic reaction or absorb heat from the system in the case of an exothermic reaction. So again, let's talk about those words exothermic and endothermic now that we have our words here system and surroundings. So right here, this shows an example of an exothermic process. So in an exothermic process, Heat is transferred from the system, so whatever that reaction is, to the surroundings, which makes the surroundings heat up. And so you would notice the temperature increase. So let's say you took some sort of salt and you dissolved the salt in water. If that dissolution process was an exothermic process, then you, if you stuck a, a thermometer inside that solution, as you dissolve the salt inside that solution, you would notice the temperature on the thermometer increase because the system or the reaction itself in this example is an exothermic process that gives off heat. Heat is transferred from the system to the surroundings which causes the temperature to increase. And the reverse example in an endothermic process, so this would be like our the ammonium nitrate ice pack, ammonium nitrate ice pack example. In an endothermic process, heat is transferred from the surroundings to the system. So heat is transferred from the surroundings to the system, which causes the temperature to decrease because the surroundings have cooled down. They have lost heat. All right, let's briefly talk about a coffee cup calorimeter. So a coffee cup calorimeter, they typically, it's a really basic form of a calorimeter. They use a styrofoam cup, which mostly contains the heat. So whatever heat leaves the system goes into the surroundings. Whatever heat leaves the surroundings goes into the system. So we're going to, we're assuming here that our coffee cup is retaining all of the heat, so this is an isolated system. So whatever the reaction is, and then the surroundings just represents the water, the solution around it. So because of this, and because of these two statements, we can say that Q system equals negative Q surroundings, or the reverse, Q surroundings equals negative Q system. The magnitude of those heat values should be the same, they should just have an opposite sign. Here's another example of a calorimeter, so this is a commercial calorimeter the one we'll be using in lab when we do our experiment. Uh, calorimetry looks pretty similar to this. So this is a bit better insulated than a coffee cup calorimeter, so you're gonna get slightly better results. All right, so let's talk about calorimetry of metal in water. So let's, for example, say we take a hot piece of metal and we place it into cool water. Here in the situation, we're gonna to refer to the metal as the system and the water as the surroundings. So the hot piece of metal the system is placed in the cool water and then heat is going to be transferred from the metal or from the system to the water to the surroundings heat is transferred from the system to the surroundings which makes this an exothermic process and so after that metal is placed in the water if you give them some time they'll reach the equilibrium temperature and so the temperature of the water should have increased because that water absorbed heat from the metal now again, we are assuming that our calorimeter is a nice isolated system. So all of the heat transfer is between the system and the surroundings. So because of this, we can say negative Q metal equals Q water, or essentially the heat lost by the metal is equal to the heat gained by the water. Now again, these two Q values, they have the same magnitude, but they have opposite an opposite sign. It's important that they have an opposite sign or your math may not work out properly here. All right, let's take a look at an example. A 59.7 gram piece of metal that had been submerged in boiling water was quickly transferred into 60 milliliters of water initially at 22 degrees Celsius. The final temperature is 28.5 degrees Celsius. Use these data to determine the specific heat of the metal and then use this result to identify the metal. So seawater equals 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Now you should remember here that we are using mass values. The water value you're given is in milliliters. We're gonna assume a density of one gram per milliliter. So let's identify our variables. Mass of the metal is 59.7 grams. Specific heat of the metal is unknown. The initial temperature of the metal is 100 degrees Celsius since it had been submerged in boiling water. 
and the final temperature of the metal is 28.5 degrees Celsius. Mass of the water is 60 grams, specific heat 4.184, initial temp 22, and final temp 28.5. So now we're going to step one, solve for Q of the water. So Q water equals MC delta T. Plug in M, plug in C, plug in delta T, and we get 1,631.76 joules. Step two, find Q metal. So again, we're saying that Q metal equals negative Q water, which means Q metal equals negative 1,631.76 joules. Now we're gonna solve for the unknown variable. Remember, we know the mass, we know the change in temperature, we don't know C. So plug in Q, plug in the mass, C is our unknown, and then plug in those T values. All right, when you do some algebra here and solve, you get C equals 0.382 joules per gram degrees Celsius. So that answers the first part of the question. Second part of the question, identify the metal. Our metal here is likely copper. If I asked you to do this on the exam, identify the metal, you'd be given a little table that you know maybe had four or five different metals on it and their specific heat values. And you would identify the metal that most closely matches the specific heat value that you solved for. All right. Let's have you try a knowledge check question. A 38.6 gram piece of metal at 75.4 degrees Celsius is dropped into 98.6 grams of water, originally at 29.5 degrees Celsius. The final temperature of both the metal and water is 37.8 degrees Celsius. What is the specific heat C of the metal? C, 2.4 degrees Celsius. All right, next. Let's look at a neutralization reaction example. So the first type of calorimetry example was just placing a metal in the water, but here we're looking at an actual reaction and we'll be doing this, uh, both of these types of examples in lab. This one states, when 50 milliliters of one molar hydrochloric acid and 50 milliliters of one molar sodium hydroxide, both at 22 degrees Celsius, are added to a coffee cup calorimeter, the temperature of the mixture reaches a maximum of 28.9 degrees Celsius. What is the approximate amount of heat produced by this reaction? All right, so first we're gonna set up our equation. Q solution equals MC delta T. Now the mass of the solution, it's the 50 grams of HCl solution. Again, we're assuming a density of one gram per milliliter plus the 50 grams of the sodium hydroxide solution, which is equal to 100 grams. So the mass of our solution is 100 grams since we are mixing HCl and NaOH together. Next, we're going to assume that these solu this solution has the same specific heat as the, as the specific heat of water, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And finally, delta T. The final temperature is 28.9. The initial is 22.0. So now we can plug these values in. 100, degree, or 100 grams excuse me, times 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius times that 28.9 minus 22.0. And you solve and you get... 2,887 joules. So Q solution equals 2,887, which means Q reaction would be negative 2,887 joules. So the solution absorbed heat, the reaction gave off heat. So if I asked you for Q reaction, you would say negative 2,887, since that re this reaction is exothermic. It caused the temperature of the surroundings to increase. But based upon the way the question is worded, you could say that 2,887 joules of heat are produced by this reaction. All right, finally, let's look at an ice pack example. So this is a dissolution of a salt. This one states, when solid ammonium nitrate dissolves in water, the solution becomes cold. This is the basis for an instant ice pack. When 3.21 grams of solid ammonium nitrate dissolves in 50 grams of water at 24.9 degrees Celsius in a calorimeter, the temperature decreases to 20.3 degrees Celsius. What is Q for the reaction? All right, let's start by again setting up our equation. Q solution equals MC delta T for the solution. So the mass of the solution, we need to include the mass of the ammonium nitrate here since it's being dissolved in the water. So that would be 3.21 grams of ammonium nitrate plus the 50 grams of water. So the mass of the solution is 53.21 grams. For the specific heat of the solution, we are again going to assume that it's just the specific heat of water, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And finally, our temperature values. The final temperature is 20.3. 
the initial is 24.9. So Q solution equals 53.21 grams times 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius times 20.3 minus 24.9. So Q solution equals negative 1024.1 joules. Notice that we have a negative Q value here because the temperature of the solution dropped. Now since I asked for Q reaction, your answer would be positive. Q reaction equals negative Q solution, which is 1024 joules. This means 1024 joules leave the surroundings, the water in the ice pack and your body touching it, and go into the system, which is the reaction itself, the reaction of the ammonium nitrate dissolving in water. All right, briefly, let's talk about a bomb calorimeter. Bomb calorimeters involve using heat capacity. So the heat capacity of the calorimeter is used in calculations. So bomb calorimeters, they are often used to measure the amount of calories in food, but they can be used for other reactions as well. So here, you've got referred to as, as the bomb. So it's a small metal cylinder with the sample cup. So the sample is placed inside the cup. Then this cylinder here is sealed off and there's just a small inlet that allows oxygen gas to be pumped in. And then this chamber is immersed in water. So what happens here is oxygen gas is pumped in and then a combustion reaction is ignited. So you essentially, you blow up whatever the sample is. Then based upon how much heat the water and the calorimeter itself absorbs, you are able to determine how much heat the sample produced. So let's take a look at an example. When 3.12 grams of glucose, C6H12O6, is burned in a bomb calorimeter, the temperature of the calorimeter increases from 23.8 degrees Celsius to 35.6 degrees Celsius. The calorimeter contains 775 grams of water, and the bomb itself has a heat capacity of 893 joules per degree Celsius. How much heat was produced by the combustion of the glucose sample? All right, so again, think about what's going on here with the bomb calorimeter. This glucose is being, essentially, it's being blown up, it's being exploded, and both the water and the calorimeter itself absorb heat from that combustion reaction. So we need to determine how much heat the water absorbed. We also need to determine how much heat the calorimeter itself absorbed. So let's start with the calorimeter. So this is just equal to the heat capacity times the change in temperature, which would be 893 joules per gram degree Celsius, times 35.6 minus 23.8, and this gives 10,537 joules. So the bomb calorimeter itself absorbed 10,537 joules of heat. Now let's do this for the water. So Q water equals MC delta T. Mass of the water, 775 grams. Specific heat, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And change in temperature would be 35.6 minus 23.8, and this gives 38,263 joules. So we're gonna add those two values together, and then we're gonna make the sign negative since the sample, remember it's an exothermic reaction, the sample is giving off heat. So we add these two together, and then flip the sign to negative. And so we get negative 48,800 joules, or negative 48.8 kilojoules. So Q sample equals negative 48.8 kilojoules, or we could say that 48.8 kilojoules of heat was produced by the combustion of this glucose sample. Okay, last thing I want to mention here, again, nutritional calories, nutri nutritional calories, they are often determined by combustion in a bomb calorimeter. Anytime you buy some sort of processed food, typically what they take is they take a sample of that food, they weigh it, they mix it in a blender, they freeze dry it, and they grind it into a powder, form it in a pellet, and then they stick it inside a bomb calorimeter and the temperature change helps determine the energy produced per gram of food. All right, so here are three practice problems for you to try. So pause the video, give these an attempt to see if you understand the material in this section. And once you have done so, you can move on to the next slide, which has the answers. That concludes section 9.2. I'll see you in the next video for section 9.3, Enthalpy.